Hi again then guys and welcome to another throwback to the past of the Forza franchise to Forza 4 once again. And this is a car which I don't talk about a massive amount on the channel. And I certainly wouldn't call it one of my favourite LMP cars. But when I was playing Forza 4 pretty much all the time a few years back, well quite a few years back now, I used to use this car probably more than any other LMP car or any other Le Mans car period in the game the Acura ARX 02A. It's not a car which a ton of people know about, for instance, who are on the Gran Turismo franchise, unless you are specifically into the Le Mans and all of the less obvious cars and less publicized cars. But this one, it's kind of a legend in the Forza franchise because it's not featured in a huge amount of the games, but the ones which it is featured in, it's a monster. This car is one of the best cornering machines in Forza 4. Now there's also its little brother, the LMP2 ARX01B, and we are going to discuss that one as well down the line in this same review series. That car is also fantastic in its own right, it's an absolute screamer. Both of these Acuras rev up to around 10,000 RPM. They've got fantastic specs, this one is pretty expensive, it's two and a half million credits, which easily puts it on par with stuff like the Audi R15, the Aston Lola, various others too, which it certainly deserves to be, whereas the 01B, the LMP2 car, is a full half a million credits cheaper, at two million. Now this car has a much higher PI level, as you'd assume, 990, and I believe there was also a VIP version of this car which had different livery and a predominantly green front end I think it was. I never owned that car though, because I didn't get the VIP version of the game, but there are two versions of this car which you can buy regardless of if you're a VIP or not. There's this one, which is the one that most people go for, understandably, but there's also one which means a lot more to me now than it did back when I was playing the game as a teenager. Because the other one is a tribute to Jim Hall. And of course, anyone who knows Jim Hall knows Chaparral. And Chaparral is one of my favourite brands, one of my favourite racing teams. Some incredible innovation, I would say some of the best innovation of all time in fact. And it's great that they did a tribute to him. Now that car, interestingly, is not quite as strong in terms of spec. It's one PI point lower than this car at 989 instead of 990, which is weird because all of the other specs, and as far as I can remember, the performance itself is the same. It's the exact same car, just with a different livery. So that's kind of weird, but for any Chaparral fan, it's certainly worth looking into getting that one. It even costs the same, so it's not like you're losing any money. But most people tend to go for this one, it's certainly the more eye-catching of the two. And people who don't know who Jim Hall is, you know, it won't mean anything to them, it's just a white version, who cares about that? This one though is still a fantastic car, of course, you've got a 4 litre engine, 625 horsepower, without even doing anything to it. You can get it a lot higher than that, if memory serves, over 800 horsepower, I think. 375 pound-feet of torque doesn't sound great, but it's not bad, and the weight is, as you'd assume, 900 kilos. Now that's a lot heavier than its little brother. That car only weighs 800 kilos, which is incredible, but of course the payoff is that that car has way less power, 510. But both of them are superb in their own way. The 01B, which as I said we will get to and discuss more specifically, is a pure cornering missile. In a straight line though, it can be pretty easily beaten even by a number of other LMP2 cars, actually. This one, on the other hand, this is an all-rounder, because for top-end speed, it's not on the same level as a 962 or a Sauber, or necessarily even something like the Panos, but it's not slow, that's for sure. If I can recall correctly, I think I used to be able to get this one up around 230, 235, something like that with low aero, which is pretty impressive for a car that's not a particularly beefy engine for top end speed. It's more of a high revving, again, cornering machine, really. Now on the Le Mans, it kind of ironically can be pretty easily beaten by stuff like the Sauber or the 962 or various others, the Bentley Speed 8, of course, the Audi R10, the Peugeot 908, a number of others can beat this one quite handily, in fact, on some of the straight sections. But if you get this car on a track where you can't use top-end power or top-end speed to their advantage, well, then this car is a force to be reckoned with. 
it can handily outmaneuver a lot of other cars. And the handling, although still not quite as good as the O1B, is very good. It's easily a much more responsive and much sharper car than something like an Audi R8, or the Cadillac even, as much as I love that one, or even the Panos. The Panos and the Cadillac, I would say, are smoother than this one through corners, especially the Panos, but this one is far sharper, it feels focused, and the car almost feels like neurotic. It feels like it's frenzied. It's got this laser focus on what it's doing. Through corners, it's brutal. The engine loves to be worked hard. Low torque, high power, high revs. Kind of like riding a MotoGP bike or even driving a Formula car. And people used to love making Formula-style liveries on this car, which is understandable. It has that kind of handling. Now, if you do choose to use this car, it's definitely one to use under the right circumstances. I used to use it a ton, but I didn't used to use it on stuff like Le Mans, especially without the chicanes, because there are so many cars, as I said earlier, that can beat it. So it's the kind of vehicle which will serve you very well as an all-rounder, but you do need to know, for instance, if you're doing like a championship with friends or a league or something like that, you need to know the tracks ahead of time and plan ahead, because it can have better top speed, but its strengths are cornering and acceleration. Mid-range and top-end speed, not so much. But if you use it under the right circumstances, the O2A is a weapon. And so is the O1B in its own way as well. A very similar way, actually, but it approaches it in a different method. But overall, this car served me extremely well, and it kind of reminded me, really, of Pescarolo on Gran Turismo. That kind of car which just popped up out of nowhere, I'd never heard of it before, and yet I used it to dominate career mode. I did that with the Pescarolo on Gran Turismo 4, and I did it with this Acura on Forza 4. They're both out of nowhere, unexpected heroes, really, of the class, and they are a force to be reckoned with, for sure. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.